Hello folks, it's Toad Hancocks here with Visordown.com. Welcome to a gloriously sunny Donington Park and the review of the 2021 Triumph Speed Triple 1200 RS. So we have had a rather enjoyable day today. So we spent all morning sort of riding around the, the local roads around sort of Northamptonshire, Leicestershire and Lincolnshire. And then this afternoon, once the track day had finished here at Donington Park, Triumph have let us loose on the hallowed tarmac of the Donington Park GP circuit on their brand new Speed Triple. So it has been a bit of an eye-opening day. Uh, I was actually lucky enough to be here last year in that kind of, does sound good, in that little break between COVID when everything started to open up again. Um, so I actually did a track day here on the previous generation Speed Triple. So a really, really good chance to compare the two back to back. Before we go into the bike in detail though, this is £15,100 and it is the only Speed Triple that you can buy. There is no R, there is no other one, there is just the RS, that's it. And that's based upon customer feedback that Triumph gained when they were researching how they were going to put this bike together. Um, it is also a ground up redesign. I mean, it may look similar in some respects. The frame looks similar, the subframe looks similar um, and the swing arm, etc. But it is all new. There is nothing else that you could sort of transfer over from the old bike to this one. It is a total ground up rebuild. It is claimed to be the fastest accelerating, most powerful and best handling speed triple that we've, had, that we've got today. And after riding it today, I am inclined to agree with Triumph on that one. So let's get into the meat of this thing. Let's have a little look at the engine of the new speed triple. So as the name would suggest, this is the largest capacity speed triple that we've had to date. It's been increased up to 1160cc and it is pushing out 180 PS or 177 bhp. Uh, we've got 125 newton meters of torque and not just more torque, we've got more torque at the top end. So the, the kind of the, the, the top end of the rev range has really been boosted and uh, will overlay some of the torque curves and dynagraphs over the video now and you can really see that the top end is where this bike is really making all of its power and all of its torque. And um, that said, you don't miss any of the low down grunt or that, that easy going tractability that you get with a triple um, on the road, for instance, when you perform an overtakes and so on, you're really not, not missing it. So don't think by me saying that, that I'm, I'm saying that they've turned it into this peaky 600cc race bike. Absolutely not. It is still all of the torque all of the time, if and when you need it. So a lot of work went into the engine. It's, it's not just a Euro 5 get around. Let's increase the displacement of the engine and, and get it through the Euro 5 regulations. The whole engine has been redesigned and rethought and reworked. The old engine had been around for a while, so everything moves on and they've been able to actually sort of get masses of weight out of the engine. So it's now seven kilograms lighter than it was before. Despite having a higher capacity, it is also physically smaller. And one of the ways that Triumph have done that is they've gone for a stacked gearbox design where the input, the gearbox and the output shaft are all one above the other. And it means the whole engine can be shrunk and made smaller. It's also got a new clutch for this year with high friction uh, friction plates in there. So they've reduced the number of friction plates and all of that has been done just to try and reduce the internal inertia and the rotational mass of the engine. Um, Trying for claiming as well that this has got the smoothest gear change of any speed triple. I'm not totally in inclined to agree with them on that. I did actually prefer the previous generation speed triples gear change. It had a really, really nice precise snick when you, when you shifted up the box. This is still precise. You don't have any issues with it, but it just doesn't have that same sort of weapons grade feel to it that the previous generation bike did. <laughs> I'm going to talk about the suspension, the brakes and the handling now, which is obviously the keynote speech of any naked motorcycle. We've still got the absolute top spec suspension on this thing. So we've got Olin's uh, NIX 30 fully adjustable for, uh, front forks and we've still got the same TTX uh, 36 rear shock absorber, which again is totally fully adjustable. We've got the obvious sort of combination of Brembo brakes. So we've got the four pot Brembo style Ema calipers up front and we've got the two piston uh, sliding Brembo caliper at the rear. So this bike has had a big injection of zeros and ones into the ECU. So Triumph have really, really gone at the wheelie control, the traction control, sorry, the wheelie control is the traction control on this bike, but they've really gone at it and they've worked really, really hard um, to make it more of a super naked and less of a naked. They're trying to sort of, I think, take the fight to people like Yamaha with the MT-10 and Kawasaki with the ZH2, for instance. Um, 
On the road, I couldn't really feel any of it working because we've got good tyres. We've got new tyres for this year. We've got Metzler Racetech RRs. We've got a really nice sunny day and we've got lovely roads to ride on. So I couldn't really feel much of the, the electronics doing much underneath me. And that's partly because the pace of the ride was quite slow. But out here on the tarmac at uh, Donington Park, I've really been able to sort of play with the electronics, the anti-wheelie and the traction control and sort of move them around. And it is a lot more intuitive uh, than the previous uh, Speed Triple. You can also feel much more that it's doing something. The, the previous bike, you could sort of fiddle with the settings a little bit, and because they were a bit more vague, for want of a better phrase, you could really tell what it was doing, but it's definitely noticeable on the new bike that it is changing stuff. Obviously, when you increase the power of a bike like this and you reduce the weight, you're gonna make it a bit more of an animal to ride, and that is the case with the Speed Triple. Um, the old bike was an animal to start with, and this isn't totally out there it's, it's still fun to ride but you definitely it's more physical you need to work it harder and you do end up just crawling all over that front end just to keep the front wheel down especially down the start finish straight here at Donington Park that said it's still it's still a, an ideal road bike out on the road today we were, we were sort of pootling along just in the sun just enjoying a nice ride and not really pushing on too hard and the setup was just on that that point where you could get away with it it wasn't so hard that you were jarring your back on potholes but you still had enough support that we could come here to Donington on pretty much exactly the same settings and go out and do some laps you know without having too much trouble or too much problem so I think they've got the mixture between the road and the track set up for the suspension pretty much spot on. I just want to talk about the comfort as well because Triumph did say that they'd improved the comfort. It is better, uh, the seat is smaller but not so much that you'd notice it with the, with your backside, but it's it's slightly more contoured and it's got a little bit more padding in there as well. Um, I did still find that I was getting a bit of an achy ass after about two hours in the saddle. But other than that, it's the riding position, the rider triangle, I couldn't really tell any difference between this and the old previous generation Speed Triple. So, what do we like about the Speed Triple? Uh, I love the styling. To be honest with you, I knew that the Speed Triple was gonna look this good when we saw the Street Triple in about 2019 and we realized that that was the, the bike that we'd all been waiting for. Um, and it was only a matter of time before Triumph did the same the same number on it that they've done um, and it was always going to look good. The bike is so much more compact and so much more neat and tidy. The tail's been made smaller and it just looks like a thoroughly, thoroughly modern super naked and it starts to look a little bit dated in the previous guys. Um, I also really enjoy the engine. The, 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 the power delivery and the torque delivery of it is just silky smooth and, and really, really nicely engineered. Um, you've got all the speed that you need and all the power and all the tractability for the road but you know, on a, on a track day on the previous generation bike you would find yourself getting gobbled up once you got past 130 miles an hour by the super bikes but I don't think that's going to be quite so much of a problem on this machine. What don't we like about the Speed Triple? Um, hard to find something really. Uh, I, I do still find the seat uh, slightly uncomfortable it's a little bit hard I do suffer from a tender backside anyway I pretty much think every bike has got too hard a seat so that's probably just down to me. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's probably just about it, really. There isn't much not to like about this bike. If you're a fan of the previous generation Speed Triple, then you'll definitely be a fan of this machine. So there we have it, the 2021 Speed Triple RS. Um, it is more of an animal. It's more of a handful if provoked. I mean, a dog only bites you when you poke it with a stick and that's the situation with this thing. You don't need to ride it like an idiot, but when you do, you do feel like this thing is a completely different animal to the previous bike. As I said at the start of the video, this is £15,100. They are going to be in dealerships from the 1st of May or the beginning of May, I think. Um, so if you like what you see, get yourself down to your local Triumph dealership once they are all back up and running and see if you can sort yourself out a test ride. There's going to be a full review of this bike going up on visordown.com. Thank you very much, folks. Uh -huh.